Diving in a team with one or two other divers not only makes diving safer, it makes it a lot more fun too. That's why the buddy system is considered to be such an integral part of recreational diving. For the buddy system to work, however, there are a number of things that you need to do. These include reviewing and agreeing on hand signals and other forms of communication, agreeing on what you will do in case of buddy separation or other problems, being thoroughly familiar with each other's equipment, including alternate air sources, BC power inflators, and scuba unit and weight releases, formulating a dive plan that's within the limits of all team members' training and experience, and sticking to that plan underwater. Helping each other go through the ABC checklist before each dive. Staying close together and remaining within sight of one another at all times. Pacing yourselves so that your speed underwater is dictated by the limits of the slowest member of the team, not the fastest. Ascending as soon as the first member of the team reaches an agreed upon limit, such as a dive computer's no stop time or minimum air pressure. And finally, remembering that any team member can end the dive at any time and for any reason. Among the things you and your buddies need to discuss ahead of time is what you will do if you become separated underwater. The most common procedure is for separated buddies to look for one another for no more than one minute, then surface and reunite there. While you are looking, there are a number of things you can do to increase the likelihood of reuniting underwater. First, look around you in all directions you may discover that your buddy was a lot closer than you realized. You just weren't looking the right way. If this doesn't work, try banging on your tank with the butt end of a dive knife or other solid object. This may at least establish that you and your buddy are close by. You may also want to try ascending a short distance and then looking in all directions to see whether you can locate your buddy's bubbles. If you are successful, at reuniting underwater and are still within your dive computer and air pressure limits, there's no reason why you can't continue the dive. Just pay closer attention to staying together. If you cannot find one another underwater, then make a slow ascent and a safety stop. Assuming your buddy follows the same procedure, the two of you should reunite on the surface. At this point, you and your buddy can decide whether or not to continue the dive. Bear in mind that if you can do so safely, it's almost always easier and better to swim to your exit point underwater than it is to do it on top of the water. Even with a dive computer to track your depth, time, and exposure to nitrogen, you still need to plan the dive ahead of time. Dive planning includes agreeing on a purpose for your dive. Is it sightseeing, exploration, taking photos, or examining a particular underwater artifact? Notifying someone of your plans. Familiarizing yourself with both the dive site and conditions. Determining entry and exit points. Deciding the direction you will take and who will be primarily responsible for navigation. And finally, formulating a dive plan that addresses depth, time, and minimum ascent pressure. Time has shown that the divers who consistently have the best dives and the fewest problems are the ones who plan the dive and dive the plan.